Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. The incident that occurred in the summer of 2012 in Millville, Pennsylvania, USA, captured the attention of not only the local community, but also the entire state for a long time. Many probably still recall the tragic demise of 46-year-old Frank Spencer. What is most shocking is not just that a vibrant man died in the prime of his life, but the dreadful and absurd circumstances of his passing. As a result of the events that unfolded in the family of an auto parts dealer, one person lost his life, his ex-wife ended up in prison, and her father is on the run. This story illustrates how, in a blink of an eye, a close person can become the most alien and hostile. Meeting Frank Frank was born on November 10, 1965, to Cyrus and Madeline Spencer in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. From a young age, he was fond of active games and sports, which gave him a robust physique and spirit. In high school, he was recognized as an outstanding member of the wrestling team. The young man had a curious mind and dreamed of continuing the family business. Therefore, after graduating from high school in 1984, he enrolled in a local university. He successfully completed his course of study in 1988, and after his father's death, he became the owner of Spencer's Auto Parts and Used Cars, the Beloveds. A significant event occurred in the young man's life in 1997. Fate brought Maria Sanuti and Frank Spencer together. They were immediately drawn to each other. The woman was noted for her fiery temperament and bold character. Her excessive emotionality was captivating. Frank's friend, Paul Siciliano, remembered that his buddy always liked the wild ones. There was something wild about him, too. So when they met, they had fun, he recalled. However, not everyone was pleased with the relationship, especially the lover's parents. Rumor has it that Anthony, Rocco Franklin, Maria's father, was associated with a gang and even had a reputation as a hired criminal. He took an immediate dislike to his daughter's suitor. For some time, he even tried to obstruct their union. The Spencer family was also not thrilled with Frank's choice. For this reason, the couple eloped and rented an apartment away from their families. To maintain contact with the young people, their families were forced to accept their feelings. Family life. Soon, Maria and Frank got married. After some time, they had children, first a boy and then a girl. After that, the family moved into a new home. During this time, Frank owned the auto parts business and sponsored racing cars. He worked hard to provide everything necessary for his family. For the head of the household, his children became a top priority and motivation in life. Initially, Maria tried to manage the children and household chores. However, later, despite her law degree, she began coaching her daughter's soccer team. According to friends, unlike her husband, she was not as warm to the marriage. She seemed all over the place and a bit out of this world. Domestic chores and responsibilities did not interest her. What really worried her was money. She greatly enjoyed spending what Frank earned. But what was more striking was her coldness towards the children. Gradually, Mrs. Spencer's behavior led to problems in the marriage. Her husband became dissatisfied with her selfishness and eccentricity. He felt that, having become a mother, she should have matured and thought of others. However, Maria did not change. In 2006, the man initiated a divorce. He was finally tired of the constant scandals and inappropriate behavior of his wife. Sometimes she behaved so unreasonably that Frank feared for the children's health. At that time, the idea of divorce seemed to be the only correct solution. However, after deciding to separate, the relationship between the former spouses became even more strained. The confrontation. Spencer wanted to keep the children with him. He didn't trust his ex-wife and was convinced that she couldn't properly care for them. Not everyone in his circle agreed with his stance. For example, his friend Ron asserted that for the children's normal development, both parents were necessary. He strongly recommended that his friend negotiate with Maria and share custody equally. Apparently, Frank knew more than his friends did, so he continued to insist on sole custody. 
In retaliation, the woman did the same. Moreover, she was counting on substantial child support payments. This conflict intensified over time. More than once, due to his ex-wife's erratic behavior, the man had to call the police. The woman would attack him and the children. However, not everyone believed this. In 2008, an incident occurred that confirmed the main character's words. Following a scuffle with her former mother-in-law, Maria was arrested near her child's school. The issue was that she came to pick up the girl, but Frank's mother tried to stop her. It turned out that the woman's decision was justified since they had another arrangement that day. But at the last minute, Maria decided to change it. After the fight, she took the child and put her in the car but forgot to buckle her up. On the way, police officers stopped her car and assessed her actions as a threat to the child's life and health. Consequently, Maria began having problems. She was charged with disorderly conduct. Additionally, Frank accused his ex-wife of stalking him. He claimed that she had repeatedly followed him. For this reason, she was charged with another crime. However, the prosecution could not prove a threat to the child's life. Therefore, the authorities agreed to drop the charge in exchange for her guilty plea to disorderly conduct and stalking. Ultimately, Maria admitted her guilt and was fined $600. But even this event did not make the woman reconsider her behavior. Quite the opposite occurred. The ex-wife became more embittered. After this case, Frank's acquaintances and relatives increasingly heard complaints from him. He reported that Maria had escalated to threats, and her stalking continued. Later, some of Mrs. Spencer's colleagues confessed that she had repeatedly said how much she hated Frank and was ready to end his life. Because of this, one of her co-workers jokingly nicknamed her the Black Widow. At the same time, the man tried to keep calm and smooth over the rough edges. He repeatedly tried to talk to his former beloved, but she did not cease. The hero of the story even began documenting all conflicts. He did not want to cause her legal trouble, but he did it in case something bad happened. He just wanted to live and work in peace, but Maria clearly went too far. Escalation of the Situation By 2009, the Spencers' divorce process seemed endless. All this time, the children were with their mother. Frank tried not to despair and eventually met a woman named Julie Dent. Soon, the pursuer learned about her ex-husband's new relationship. According to her words, she didn't care that Frank was dating Julie. What bothered her most was that the rival had found a connection with the children However, the man thought otherwise. He knew that the cause of all the troubles was his ex-wife's intense jealousy. After this event, Maria became completely enraged. In February 2009, she sent a voice message to Julie, warning her not to come near her children. However, the situation truly escalated when the main character's father-in-law was released from prison. After five years of incarceration for fraud, the criminal's reputation had only worsened. For Frank, this meant more trouble since he knew the fierce temperament of his former relative well. Many believed that Maria had inherited her character from her father. At this time, Spencer's circle noted that he had become pensive and worried, and not without reason, the first crime. After Rocco's release, a robbery occurred at Frank's office. Important documents that could have influenced the divorce proceedings were stolen. The next day, Maria called her ex-husband and mentioned that she found a trash bag with interesting contents on her porch. Frank understood what she was referring to and advised her to return what was taken. Additionally, he reported the break-in to the police. However, proving anyone's involvement in the incident was unsuccessful. According to detectives, no traces of the perpetrators were found. Nevertheless, everyone understood Maria and her father's interest in committing the crime. The investigation also considered the ex-wife as a suspect. Ultimately, the case investigation was discontinued. At the same time, thanks to the efforts of law enforcement, Maria handed over the acquired documents to the owner. Most likely, they simply contained nothing substantial that could be used in court. Thus, 
The lack of evidence was perceived by Spencer's pursuers as a license for impunity. The situation continued to escalate. The limit of patience. Subsequently, threats from the former beloved followed on social media. She was still discontent that the children were communicating with Julie. Unlike her, the new partner was calm and balanced. She enjoyed spending time with her beloved and his kids. She tried not to interfere in the complicated relationships of the former spouses. However, she was extremely outraged that in her quest for revenge, Maria forgot about her parental responsibilities. The disputes continued until 2010. At that time, Frank's patience reached its breaking point. The man could not stand it any longer and turned to law enforcement. He asked the police officers to assess the behavior of his ex-wife and provided their correspondence. It clearly contained veiled threats. However, Maria claimed that this was just her way of communicating and that she meant nothing reprehensible by it. Once again, it was not possible to prove the woman's guilt since her warnings sounded vague. Unfortunately, this time too, the pursuer remained unpunished. Fires. In January 2010, another misfortune awaited the man. The couple planned to go on a romantic trip to the Caribbean islands. By strange coincidence, on the night before the trip, a fire broke out at Frank's mother's house. Fortunately, no one was harmed. However, all property was destroyed by fire and smoke. Witnesses claimed that a car, driven by Maria and accompanied by neighbors and acquaintances, pulled up to the house. The woman behind the wheel watched the scene with a smile before driving away. After the fire service extinguished the flames, a dog belonging to one of Frank's children was found among the ashes. Tragically, it did not survive that fateful night. Spencer was forced to call the police again. No one believed the fire was an accident. This time, Maria's actions had gone too far. It was clear she would stop at nothing to achieve her goals. Nevertheless, no evidence of deliberate arson was found as it likely was destroyed by the fire. Thus, the fire was deemed an accident. After this, the frenzied woman sent Frank a message in which she subtly gloated, writing about how karma had caught up with him, and for her ruined life, he might face yet more repercussions. Later, the pursuer began sending similar messages to Julie. With the police's inaction, Maria's audacity grew. She became so emboldened that she could afford public threats against her ex and his new partner. A few months later, a fire occurred at Julie's house. This time, the situation could have been much worse. She was home when the fire started. She managed to escape by jumping off the porch roof. Miraculously, she was unharmed, which could not be said for her home. It was not completely destroyed, but was rendered uninhabitable. Consequently, Frank invited his beloved to move in with him. Naturally, the young couple feared this would only anger his ex further, but they had no other options. At the same time, the cause of the fire was being investigated. The similar modus operandi made it clear whose handiwork it was. Since the woman's home was in a different county, the couple hoped for an impartial police investigation. However, even this time, they were of no help. Due to the lack of evidence, the fire could again be dismissed as a bizarre accident. Nevertheless, Julie was determined and appealed to higher authorities. This moved the investigation forward. Unexpectedly, flares were found in the applicant's backyard. One was damaged and lay nearby in the grass. Detectives also found another similar one, which apparently had caused the fire. Additionally, experts determined that the steps on the home's terrace had been doused with a flammable mixture. Eventually, after all inspections and expertise, arson was recognized as the cause of the fire. However, as before, no perpetrator was identified. Due to the lack of direct evidence, the potential criminals again evaded punishment. A Cold Summer, 2012 In June 2012, Frank and Julie decided to break up. In reality, it was a cunning plan to briefly lull Maria's vigilance. Then followed the final breakup of the Spencers. Unfortunately, the long-awaited peace did not come. Just a few weeks later, Frank was found deceased. On July 3rd, Joe, a friend of the main character, decided to visit his friend. 
There had been no word from him lately, which surprised no one. The man had recently gone through a divorce and wanted some solitude. However, there was urgent business. The friends had spent many years carting with their children. Their team was in the midst of a big series they hoped to win, but unexpected breakdowns could ruin the desired result. Since Frank was not responding to phone calls, Joe decided to visit him personally. Arriving at the cottage, the man grew anxious. The front door was slightly ajar, and there were stains near the threshold. His fears were confirmed as soon as he entered the house. His friend lay on the floor, lifeless. Frank's face was so serene it seemed as though he had finally found the peace he desired. The man circled the body and noticed dried blood in the ear. Without hesitation, the accidental witness called emergency services. When the news of the incident spread around the district, everyone knew who was behind such a monstrous crime. Nevertheless, it was up to the detectives to sort everything out on their own. Investigation. Experts who arrived at the scene found large pools of blood and several extensive drag marks. Additionally, a clear shoe print was discovered on the floor, and bloodied gloves were found in the kitchen. These physical pieces of evidence were sent for analysis. Subsequent investigation revealed that the bloody shoe print matched the model and size worn by Rocco, Maria's father. Furthermore, skin particles from Frank's ex-wife were found inside the examined gloves. It was known that the woman had not lived with the deceased for over a year, so the gloves with fresh DNA could not have been left in the house by chance. All evidence pointed to the involvement of both in the crime committed. Soon, the suspects were detained. Autopsy and ballistics analysis determined that Frank Spencer had been shot with two different types of weapons. The first bullet was fired from a .30 caliber sniper rifle as he stood by the front door. Forensic experts found a sniper's nest approximately 115 feet from the house. The bullet passed through his hand and penetrated his chest, striking a vital artery. The shot was fatal. However, the attackers did not stop there. They dragged the poor man inside, where a final controlling shot was fired into his head with a 357 Magnum revolver. By that time, the man was already deceased. Therefore, the final shot was seen as an act of revenge. It was clear that the shooter harbored hatred toward his victim. Consequently, police speculated that Rocco fired from the rifle while Maria finished what was started. Additionally, it was discovered that alongside the crime, Frank's car and dog were missing from the house, exposing Rocco and Maria. By reviewing traffic cameras, Spencer's car was spotted on a federal highway, moving away from the victim's house shortly after the crime. Unfortunately, it was not possible to identify the driver. Eventually, the vehicle was found in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, 27 miles from Frank's home and 5 miles from Maria's residence. However, no fingerprints or other evidence were discovered inside the car. Regarding the victim's dog, it was found two days after the incident, having wandered into a wedding in Dauphin. Attendees immediately realized that the well-groomed Weimaraner had an owner. Thanks to a microchip, the dog was returned to Spencer's mother. It turned out that Frank had gotten a new pet for his children after the fire. This fortunate discovery helped clarify some aspects and effectively exposed the crime. According to the investigation, the criminals took the dog when they fled the scene. On their way home, Rocco stopped, and during this time, attracted by nearby food smells, the dog managed to escape. Subsequently, it ended up at a house where a wedding ceremony was taking place. This allowed detectives to prove that Rocco's phone pinged near the celebration site on the day of the crime, while his residence in Harrisburg was 12 miles away, contradicting his assertion that he was at home. Likely, it was Maria's idea to take the dog to the children, but this decision proved to be a mistake. During questioning, Rocco admitted that his son-in-law had repeatedly asked him for help and had visited him the day before his death which explains the traces found at the crime scene. However, Rocco could not explain the presence of a blood pool. His statement sounded insincere, and no one could confirm whether the men got along well or otherwise. 
Rocco also confessed that Frank had given him the vehicle to use that same day, apparently to justify his fingerprints in the victim's home. By doing so, he essentially admitted to being at the crime scene the day before. Searches were organized at the homes of Rocco and his daughter to find the crime weapons. But the seasoned criminal knew how to dispose of firearms, so neither the rifle nor the revolver was found. Ultimately, it would not have been difficult for him to dispose of the crime weapon. Maria also refused to admit her guilt. She insisted that the glove ended up in her ex's house by accident, possibly moved by the children on one of the days. In the end, the suspects were released home. However, detectives did not close the case and continued to gather necessary evidence. Meanwhile, Frank's friend, Derek Reed, managed to talk to the former friend during a school football match. During their conversation, Maria confessed that the last thing her husband saw before his death was her face. Her statement sounded odd. The investigation received heightened attention from the state's attorney general, who was extremely upset with the authorities' indifference to Frank's reports and statements. Moreover, the police received numerous complaints about their incompetence. An internal investigation was unavoidable. Unfortunately, it was not possible to prove the officer's negligent attitude towards their duty. According to the police, much information provided by Spencer lacked solid evidence, and the only person who could confirm or refute the officer's words was deceased. The public and the victim's relatives were extremely outraged that their petitions yielded no results. Meanwhile, investigators tried to prove the suspect's guilt not only in the crime, but also in stalking and other offenses committed earlier. In 2013, a major interrogation was organized. At the same time, Maria and Rocco continued to claim their innocence, denying all 12 charges against them. Their unwillingness to cooperate with the investigation led to accusations of providing false testimony. Prosecutors believed that the suspects arrived at Spencer's house together. They chose not to use their own transport to avoid drawing attention, thus they fled the scene in the victim's car. In late 2014, Maria was arrested again. By this time, Rocco had managed to flee. After the last interrogation, he boarded a plane and flew to Colombia. The investigation interpreted the man's behavior as flight and proof of guilt. For 11 months, the criminal was elusive. Eventually, he was apprehended in Buenos Aires, Argentina, after being arrested by local police and fighting extradition to the U.S., however. The criminal's efforts were in vain, and he was sent back to his home country. Justice In the fall of 2015, Maria's trial took place. She continued to deny her guilt and shifted the blame to her father. The accused claimed she loved Frank and never wished for his demise. However, numerous witnesses exposed her true character, recounting long-term threats, stalking, and arson. The trial lasted just over a week. In the end, the jury delivered their verdict. They found her guilty on all counts, including deprivation of life, arson, burglary, providing false statements, conspiracy, and making threats. Mrs. Spencer was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole plus an additional 50 years. Eyewitnesses claimed that Maria smiled constantly during the trial. I didn't end his life, so I tried to stay optimistic she explained in a later interview. A few years later, trials began for Rocco. He was extremely displeased with his daughter's accusations. The defendant insisted he was merely helping her but was against violence. It was Maria who insisted on the crime. However, physical evidence suggested otherwise. Finally, in the fall of 2018, Anthony Franklin was found guilty of deprivation of life, as well as robbery and arson. He received a life sentence without the possibility of parole, plus an additional 45 years. Upon sentencing, the 77-year-old man blew a kiss to the prosecutor and the lead detective before cursing the judge. Years later, Rocco sought a retrial, claiming his defense attorney had been ineffective, which led to his conviction. Maria also attempted to appeal her case. However, both father and daughter's efforts were fruitless. Every divorce comes with negative consequences, for some, it manifests in financial difficulties and emotional turmoil, 
leading to changes in social status and lifestyle. Over time, things typically settle into place. For Frank Spencer, however, such a breakup proved fatal. It must be said that the relationship he was in was horrendous. The man had harbored a serpent at his bosom and signed his own death warrant. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel. There are many shocking stories ahead of you.